turn me on, dead man. Hello? Am I there? Thank you. So this is the moment you've all been dreading because you knew we were going to go somewhere with all of this stuff. And you probably said sooner or later they're going to give us a pitch to uh, sponsor a child, which is a 25 buck a month kind of investment. And I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to give you a challenge, though. I'm going to say if you can find something that will bring more joy to your life for 25 bucks a month than to be a part of a child getting enough food and getting an education, getting an opportunity to make choices, getting an opportunity to know that there is a God who hears their prayers. Spend it on that all you want. And it better be a good thing. And if you find it, come back and tell me what I should be spending my 25 bucks a month on. Because I would want to be a part of it. I can think of nothing I've ever invested money in that has brought me the joy that being a compassion sponsor has brought me. And I don't think anybody anywhere needs your guilt. I don't think anybody anywhere needs you to, uh, to say, gosh, you know, we live in this really affluent country. We spend an awful lot of money on music that entertains us and, and we uh, eat great meals, etc., etc. And I ought to probably give sacrificially. We don't need that. Nobody needs your sacrifice. Christ has not called us to make ourselves miserable. He's called us to a uh, wonderful, in the words of Tony Campolo, he's called us to a party. And I'll tell you what, there is no joy that can possibly compare with the joy of being a part of someone's being alive, of knowing that someone is living, someone has hope that they did not have before because you responded out of the joy of your heart to respond, not out of guilt. So that would be my challenge for you. Have you had a good time tonight? Is it still almost unbearably hot out there? Well, sorry. We had nothing to do with the heat here. We're, uh, we're dealing with it up here too. And I think we're dealing okay. I think everyone's done okay, right? So far? Are we ready for, for yeah, Right now, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce you to a man who's going to tell you firsthand what compassion and what uh, compassion sponsors have meant, m meant in his life. So would you please welcome Jorge. Good evening. It's a, a blessing for me to be here with you tonight and try to share with you what compassion have mean in our lives and uh, the reason for me of being tonight here is because my my wife was a sponsored child by compassion in Colombia okay and uh, it's really maybe you here don't realize what does it means in the life in a child to get sponsored but uh, my wife down there in Colombia she grew up in in one of the poorest neighborhood down in Colombia and it is kind of different to be a, a poor child in, in Latin America for instance than being a, a, a poor child here in the States and uh, I just want to to share with you how this affects the life of my wife. When I, when I was in, in Colombia, she, by God's grace, she find a, a found a person who was able to, exp, to sponsor her. Both of us grew, grew up in the same neighbor, neighborhood. And uh, for me, when I was 12 years old, I left the school because I had, I had to work in order to help my family. Later on, by God's grace, I can finish my education and go to the university and become a journalist. But when I met my wife, she, she was so impressed and her life was so impacted by the word of compassion 
did for her that she encouraged me and we ended up doing a, a ministry with street kids in Bogota and uh, I just want to share with you that sponsoring a child it's a uh, it's a simple but means a lot for these children and um, I believe that when we sponsor a child we're not only giving some money or investing some money but also we are affecting a life and we can do this I always remember that everything we do we do for the Lord and everything that we do for him is not in vain so I just want to thank you all of you who who are sponsors and also some of you who are considering being sponsors it is really a blessing and it works so I just want to say that God bless us and God bless all of you Hey, how you doing? Thanks for being so patient. Um, I'm Mike Duark, and I work in the music program of Compassion International. Thanks. One person clapping. Here. Two. Okay. Oh. Money speaks. Um, thanks for your patience. Rich is going to be up here uh, with the ragamuffins in just a minute, but we're missing a muffin. So, oh, is he here? You okay, Rick? So, my stall is over. So just a couple more minutes to let him kind of get his breath, and we'll be ready to go with Rich Mullins. Thanks. I guess, is this on? How would you like to hear us do a sound check? Is this mic on? I think this will be my vocal mic, am I right? Okay. This is what we do all day.
to my songs. I hope you hear the water falling. I hope you feel the oceans crashing on the coast of North New England. And I wish that I could be there just to see them. And two summers past I was at the Holy King of Israel loves me here in America. And if I were a painter I do not know which I'd paint. Calling of the ancient stars, resembling of the saints. There's so much beauty around us for just two eyes to see. Everywhere I go, I'm looking. I once I went to Appalachia, for my father, he was born there. And I saw the mountains waking with the innocence of children. And my soul is still there with them And it's wrapped in the songs they brought And the Holy King of Israel loves me here in America And I've seen by the highways on a million exit ramps There's two-legged memorials to the laws of happenstance Waiting for four-wheeled messiahs to take them home again I'm gonna bring out uh, my writing partner, and uh, he's been—we've uh, been traveling together for I think five years now. And he wrote this song. We were in Midland, Texas, and if you've ever been there, you know there's not much to do besides write songs. And uh, I was so jealous that he wrote it without me that I convinced him that uh, it needed verses, just so that I could help write them and get writer's credit. 
So this is the sort of song that if uh, you want to sing along, it will help us out. Sometimes the night was beautiful Sometimes the sky was so far away Sometimes it seemed to stoop so close You could touch it but your heart would break Sometimes the morning came too soon Sometimes the day could be so hot there was so much work left to do But so much you'd already done Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you And I will seek you in the morning Learn to walk in your way And step by step to lead me And I will follow you all of my days Sometimes I think of Abraham How one star he saw been lit just for me He was a stranger in this land and I am that no less than he And on this road to righteousness Sometimes the climb can be so steep I may falter in my steps But never be under me Oh God, you are my God Third day, he rose 
up again He ascended into heaven Where he sits at God's mighty right hand I believe that he's returning It's just the quick and the dead of the sons of men I believe what I believe Is what makes me what I am I did not make it I believe in God the Father, Almighty Maker of Heaven and Maker of Earth. And in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, one holy church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the resurrection. And I believe in a life that will never end. Makes me what I am. I did not make it. No, it is making me. I did not make it. No, it is making me. I said I did not make it. No, it is making me. It is the very truth of God, not the image of any man. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to have to ask some of you guys to uh, move back a bit because uh, we got to go to Ireland a couple years ago. Beaker and I got to go over there, and uh, I, uh, I highly, you know, if any of you, if you know, you because we all want to go to heaven when we die, but sometimes we forget how good places can be. And so, if your desire for heaven has begun to shrink a bit you should go to Ireland and you'll get a good idea what heaven is most likely going to be like and uh, it will make you long for it a little bit more and uh, over there we saw a good bit of uh, we heard a good bit of Celtic music saw a good bit of Celtic dancing and tonight we have a, a, a little Celtic dancing for you of course uh, Catherine Clark is not Irish but uh, not everybody can be She's uh, Canadian, though, and that's all right with us. And, uh... This is a song I, uh, I really enjoyed writing. Some songs you, uh, you get in the middle of and you think, wow, do I, is, you know, am I going to go ahead and bother to finish this song or am I going to uh, drop it? And uh, this was a song that I got about halfway through and I, I couldn't complete it because I... I liked it so much, I kept thinking, you know, as I often do, when you run into something you really like, if you talk about it enough, you will, you know, spoil it. And uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to finish a song because uh, you feel like maybe you got a, a gift somewhere and if you try to manipulate it, you will wreck it. And uh, I hope I didn't. This is a song called The Color Green.
And the moon was a sliver of silver On the floor of a, like a shaving that fell On the floor of a carpenter's shop And every house must have its bed And I awoke in the house of God With the windows of mornings and evenings Across the sky, north to south On my way to early beating I heard the rocks crying out I heard the rocks crying out
Well, sometimes my life just don't make sense at all When the mountains look so big And my faith just seems so small So hold me, Jesus Cause I'm shaking like a leaf You have been king of my glory Won't you be my prince of peace? And I wake up in the night and feel the dark It's so hot inside my soul I swear there must be roosters on my heart So hold me Jesus Cause I'm shaking like a leaf You have been king of my glory Won't you be my prince of peace This is a sing-along song that I want you to sing with us on, and it's uh, done very simply. I will sing a line of the song, and uh, then you simply answer. It's uh, the way they used to do it before they had hymnals. It's called Lining Out. This is a song I wrote. Uh, you know, you never think of Maryland as being a particularly beautiful state. and. Uh, I was on my way to uh, Florida one time from Pennsylvania and I had to go through Maryland and it was uh, about three o'clock in the morning as I was driving through there and people often ask us where we get our inspiration from and we, you know, our, our standard answer is that we, we don't believe our songs are inspired, that, you know, because we, we have all these pagan friends, you know, and, and you try to talk to them about how you believe that the Bible is inspired, that it is the breath of God, that God acted and, and, and spoke, and, and we have a record of his actions and of his words. And so we don't like to say that our songs are inspired because we don't want anyone to be confused by our bad theology. So we like to say that we believe that the Bible is inspired and that our songs are provoked. And the thing that it provoked this song was driving through uh, Maryland, which I never thought of as being a beautiful state until I went there. And uh, it was about three in the morning and I was driving down the highway and uh, the moon was out. It was a big full moon. And I uh, thought, you know, I thought about that parable by Kierkegaard, of course, because I think of Kierkegaard frequently. <laughs> about the rich man and the poor man and how the rich man drove by the light of his lantern and how he could only see a little way in front of him and how the poor man had no lantern. So he had to walk by the light of the moon and he could see all the hills and the trees and everything and I thought yeah I remember when I was a kid you know growing up in Indiana there are no curves in our roads because there's nothing to curve around <laughs> and so we used to go out on the gravel roads in our dad's trucks because they were all so banged up nobody would know the difference and we would drive and 
in the middle of the night we would turn our lights out and see how far we could go before we ran into the ditch and I thought wow there are no cops out they're all over the Dunkin Donuts and uh, it is a beautiful full moon and I would like to see what Maryland really looks like so I'm not recommending this for those of you who drive but I I turned my lights out and drove down the uh, four lane all four of the lanes I drove down it is amazing to me how beautiful Maryland can be when the moon is out and when the moon is full. And folks, we, uh, people need beauty in their lives. And I hope that you will not overlook the beauty that we have in one another when we allow the light of Christ to shine on us. I love what C.S. Lewis said about the weight of glory that we can sometimes worry too much about our own glory, but we can never think too much of our neighbor's glory. And he said, you have never met a mere mortal, that nations are mortal, cultures are mortal, and their life is to ours like the life of a flea. But the person sitting next to you, the person that you might snub, the person that you might laugh at, they will live forever. Someday Christ will return. And someday we will be raised up again. And when he has made us up, taken us out of what we used to be and made us into what we will be, if you could see what your neighbor is going to look like now, if you could see now what they will look like then, you would be tempted to worship them. You would be tempted to fall down on your face for reverence. Don't forget to look at each other. Don't forget to listen to each other. I so appreciate that you've listened to us all night. And it's been a hot one, and you've been a wonderful audience to talk with. Listen to one another on your way out. And uh, don't stop listening and don't stop singing, because uh, singing is a good thing to do. And uh, so, repeat after me when we get to the uh, part where you sing, which is very shortly here, as soon as the drums get going. by day and then in the night the glow of a burning flame until you where I go I see you until where I go I see you and you take my hand and you wash it clean And I know the promised land This light is ahead of me And everywhere I go I see you And everywhere I go I see you And everywhere I go I see you
Well, the grass will die and the flowers fall, but your words are alive, and it will be after all. And everywhere I go, I see. Guys, uh, know this song softly and tenderly, Jesus is called, is called for you and for me. I see on the portals, he's waiting.
about, uh, oh, this is my favorite, and it's in the same key, I hope, because we're going to do it in that key because I can only play in two different keys on piano. Do you know, uh, when peace like a river bunch of people singing slightly out of tune all together which is the reason I uh, think I became a Christian musician I think the thing I loved about church when I was a little kid was that in Indiana where I grew up men didn't sing except in church and and they sang terribly when they got there and, and they sang real loud and I thought it was cool that you could go to church and do what you do the worst and do it as loud as you wanted My friends at all, you, know, you go to parties on Saturday night and about 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, you'd go, oh man, I got to get going. And they'd say, why? And I'd say, I got to go to church. And they'd say, well, what do you want to go to church with all them hypocrites for? And I'd say, well, what do I want to stay here with all you hypocrites for? <laughs> saying you're a hypocrite is about like saying you're alive. We all want people to think better of us than they have reason to. I didn't know why going to church made you a hypocrite anyway. And they say, well, you go to church, you're all holy, holy, holy for a couple hours a week, and then you go home and sin. I'd say, exactly. For a couple hours a week, you're doing pretty good. Maybe the problem isn't that you go to church. Maybe the problem is that you, you leave. Going to church is not a profession of being good or saintly. Going to church is a confession of our need to come together and to recognize that until Christ comes back, until Christ has finished his work in our lives, we need each other, folks. Don't matter whether you live in Colombia or Guatemala, Thailand, New Mexico, where, we need each other. And you sing great. So do it once more. It is well.
Thank you all for coming out. Have a great evening. Good night.